Hello, welcome to Lado Files, where we delve into intriguing and sometimes enigmatic topics. This is an interesting and very in-depth article on anti-gravity. The truth is the military has been researching anti-gravity for nearly 70 years. Sounds like science fiction, but the military began working to overcome and harness gravity in the 1950s. From what we can tell, it never stopped. At the end, I'll also talk about the pioneer anomaly that seems like anisotropic thrust from thermal energy. Did you know if you actually shine a laser in one direction, it will create force in the opposite direction because somehow photons have momentum. That'll be at the end, very interesting. That relates to one of my most popular videos is propellantless thrust, a new breakthrough by Dr. Bueller. So could anti-gravity actually be real? According to this article, the military has been studying it for decades. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. Anti-gravity research, speculation that it's been studied for nearly seven decades. The story begins in the 1950s, a time when the world was captivated by the space race and the dawn of the atomic age. Amidst this technological arms race, the U.S. military embarked on a quest to understand and possibly harness one of the most elusive forces in the universe when we still don't understand gravity. One of the early pioneers in this field was Dr. Lewis Witten, a physicist at the University of Cincinnati. In the mid-50s, Witten was recruited by George Trimble, then vice president for aviation and advanced propulsion systems at the Glenn L. Martin Company. This is the Martin B-26 Marauder. The project aimed to explore the potential of anti-gravity, a concept that was met with skepticism and ridicule by many in the scientific community. Despite the skepticism, Witten and his colleagues pressed on, driven by the belief that understanding gravity could revolutionize aerospace technology, certainly could. Their work was part of a broader initiative known as the Research Institute for Advanced Studies, founded in 1955. This institute sought to advance aerospace studies with anti-gravity being one of its most ambitious projects. Journalist Hansel Talbert of the New York Herald Tribune documented much of this early research. His articles from 1956 provide a glimpse into the fervent activity surrounding anti-gravity studies, which involved not just the Martin Company, which the Research Institute for Advanced Studies merged into, but nearly every major aerospace firm of the time, including Convair, Lear, Sikorsky, General Dynamics. One of the key sites for this research was none other than Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, imagine that, home to the General Physics Laboratory of the Aeronautical Research Laboratories, later renamed the Aerospace Research Laboratories. Here, physicist Joshua Goldberg led efforts to explore gravitational and inertial forces. The research conducted at Wright-Patterson contributed to what some have called the Golden Age of Relativity. However, in the early 1970s, the Mansfield Amendments imposed limitations on military funding for research without direct military application. Imagine that. This slowed down but did not stop the exploration of advanced propulsion concepts. Notably, in 1972, an ad hoc group published the Advanced Propulsion Concepts Project Outgrowth Report for the Air Force Rocket Propulsion Laboratory, which discussed anti-gravity propulsion, among other advanced ideas. You can actually find this on the internet, Internet Archive. Look at that, Advanced Propulsion Concepts Project Outgrowth, June 1972, Air Force Rocket Propulsion Laboratory, Edwards Air Force Base, California. Quite interesting. Electrical propulsion, look at that. I just released a recent video on the 170-foot barbell and how it uses electrical propulsion, electromagnetic propulsion. Here are the contributors on that. See if anyone you recognize. Interesting here, look, electrostatic thruster performance. This is basically the propellantless thrust supposedly came from electrostatics. This is in the year 1970. During the counter year 1970, an ad hoc group within the Air Force Rocket Propulsion Laboratory, AFRPL, conducted a study of advanced propulsion concepts in an attempt to predict the propulsion developments and breakthroughs that may occur in the next 30 to 40 years. Various government agencies, educational institutions, industries, and individuals were contacted and encouraged to submit inventions or suggestions in the area of propulsion and related science. Propulsion was broadly defined as any technique 
for transmitting a mass from one point to another in an aerospace environment. Contributors were encouraged to apply unrestricted thinking in approaching the problem of propulsion. The basic idea was to reestablish the type of free thinking and creativity that existed during the late 50s and early 60s an inventiveness which to a large extent appears to have been lost during more recent times, unfortunate. I wanted to check the electromagnetic accelerators, but here it looks like you're just still accelerating mass. You're not using basically just an electric anisotropy, like the problemless thrust idea. Here's electrostatic thrusters. Electrostatic thrusters generate thrust by accelerating charged particles by means of an electric field. So you're still accelerating particles. It's not just an anisotropy of thrust. So here again, you're gonna need a working fluid and you're still pushing something out the back, which is still quite interesting. This is from 1970. So it looks like they, they didn't have the idea of anis anisotropic, say that word five times, thrust through electrostatics, as Dr. Bueller said. Yeah, see, in an electrostatic engine, thrust is produced by the ejection of positive ion accelerated by electric fields. They had other ones. Alfen wave propulsion uses magnetohydrodynamic waves to achieve thrust. And it looks like they did actually look into it. Electrostatic effects, propulsion or lift is obtained through the use of electrostatic forces. Several concepts are explored. Electrostatic lift. This concept utilizes giant charged spheres arranged symmetrically in the ground just below surface level. These spheres are charged simultaneously at a prescribed rate, centrally located relative to the underground spheres is a single sphere charged to its maximum, which is lifted into space as the buried spheres are charged. Basically, you bury these spheres and you can lift something electrostatically. But again, propellantless thrust is all in the same object. Okay, and here's anti-gravity propulsion concept, utilizing the control of gravitational forces of the Earth and other celestial bodies as a means of propulsion. That would give you infinite specific impulse, near speed of light velocities attainable, minimum damage to the environment, and economic exploitation of space. They considered two concepts. One utilizes a new physical concept of gravitational absorption, gravity screens, and the second is based on the concept of a unified field theory using electromagnetic analogies to gravity control. The hardware which is being described is theoretical since fabrication of anti-gravity devices has not been attempted as far as this author has been able to determine. Okay, links are in the description if you want to check this out yourself. It's quite interesting. But here, this chapter is photon propulsion. Photon propulsion uses light pressure to provide thrust. Did you know you can shoot a laser and actually create thrust in the opposite direction? Light provides a very high specific impulse. But concepts envisioned today have low thrust-to-weight ratios. The two following concepts are probably representative of photon systems as we now see them seems probable that new, unique concepts may arise in the future, making this category of propulsion concepts much more attractive. Okay, the first concept, antimatter, a photon rocket. This concept utilizes the energy available from mass annihilation for propulsion. I guess this sounds like the Bob Lazar craft. So they imagine a number of antimatter concepts are envisioned to take advantage of the products resulting from a reaction between matter and antimatter. Annihilation products may be used directly by acceleration with electric and magnetic forces. Annihilation products may be used indirectly to heat suitable working fluid for thermal expansion through a nozzle. So shoot it out the back. And this was mentioned in Avi Loeb's Copernicus initiative with Gary Nolan. They would actually use solar energy for propulsion. What do you do that with? A solar sail. So actually the sun is pushing and this would be from photon. This is from photon pressure. And they say here, the solar sail seems to be the only scheme surviving where utilization of solar energy for propulsion is proposed. At any rate, it seems to be the only one of some current interest that is documented to any degree. Basic ideas for a vehicle in space to deploy a sail so as to intercept solar radiation. Radiation pressure on the sail will result in a thrust on the vehicle. This is light actually has momentum, which is just amazing to me how that could be possible. Okay, fast forward to the present. What do you think's happened in 54 years since then? You think they've made any advances? The interest in anti-gravity research is far from over. NASA, for instance, has funded various studies under its Breakthrough Propulsion Physics Program, investigating whether gravitational or inertial forces can be modified using electromagnetism. 
Recently, and I've covered it on the channel, a series of patents filed by Salvatore Cesar Pais for the U.S. Navy have reignited public interest in the field. These patents describe technologies that seem to defy our current understanding of physics, suggesting the possibility of hybrid aerospace underwater craft and high-energy electromagnetic field generators, basically creating gravity waves, super high frequency. These concepts echo earlier theories and experiments, but with modern advancements in material science and quantum physics, they might not be as far-fetched as we once thought. Reports like the 2006 Advanced Technology and Breakthrough Physics for 2025 and 2050 military aerospace vehicles envision a future where propellantless field propulsion could become a reality. I cover the new patents and supposed breakthrough by Dr. Bueller and his team in this video, Propellantless UAP Thrust Found, where using asymmetric electrical fields, essentially, you get electrostatics. So you can actually get an asymmetric electric field pushing the object that way. So creating a thrust, but not actually expelling any sort of propellant. Could this actually make sense? Well, kind of an interesting parallel that I found is called the Pioneer Anomaly. If you haven't heard of this, it's quite interesting. The Pioneer Anomaly or Pioneer Effect is the observed deviation from the predicted acceleration, so what they thought would be the accelerations of the Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 spacecraft. So the ones we launched way back in the 70s that are so far away, right? After they passed about 20 astronomical units, so very far from us, on their trajectories out of the solar system, the apparent anomaly was a matter of much interest for many years because it did not match our math, right? There was some other number in there, acceleration. According to Chris Brown, he said he's going to release a video. I did an interview with him. This is actually due to gravitational redshift. But let's look at what the actual scientists came up with, right? They said it was, after many years of debate, scientists found that subsequently explained by anisotropic, so asymmetric, radiation pressure caused by the spacecraft's heat loss. Radiation pressure. Imagine that. So what does this mean? Radiation pressure is mechanical pressure exerted upon a surface due to the exchange of momentum between the object and the electromagnetic field. Look at that. So exchange of momentum between the object and the electromagnetic field. This includes the momentum of light or electromagnetic radiation of any wavelength that is absorbed, reflected, or otherwise emitted by matter. Just seems amazing to me. So both Pioneer spacecraft are escaping the solar system but are slowing under the influence of the sun's gravity. Upon very close examination of navigational data, the spacecraft were found to be slowing slightly more than expected, so there was more acceleration towards the solar system. The effect is an extremely small acceleration towards the sun. Again, Chris Brown argues, and he's going to make a video, saying that this could be explained by gravitational blue shift, the opposite of red shift which is equivalent to a reduction of the outbound velocity by one kilometer per hour over a period of 10 years. So it's, it's extremely small. The two spacecraft were launched in 72 and 73. The anomalous acceleration was first noticed as early as 1980, but not seriously investigated till 1994. The last communication with either spacecraft was in 2003, but analysis of recorded data continues. Various explanations, both of spacecraft behavior and of gravity itself, gravitation itself, were proposed to explain the anomaly over the period of 98 to 2012. One particular explanation became accepted. So they accepted it. Is it correct? Well, it's accepted. The spacecraft, which are surrounded by an ultra-high vacuum and are each powered by a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, can shed heat only via thermal radiation. If, due to the design of the spacecraft, more heat is emitted in a particular direction by what is known as radiative anisotropy, then the spacecraft would accelerate slightly in the direction opposite of the excess emitted radiation due to the recoil of thermal photons. This seems amazing to me, right? It's hot, it's, so it's basically hotter on one side of the spacecraft. And so what they're saying is because it's hotter, you're actually pushing the excess heat on one side is pushing the aircraft in the opposite direction based on a recoil of thermal photons. And this is accepted uh, apparently by the scientific community. So the question is, could you actually have 
an electric radiation emitted. So electrostatic field, that's what Bueller has actually proposed. Many people said it's not possible. I get many comments saying this is BS. They're going to find it's not correct. But if you look right here, science right now is explaining excessive heat on one side because photons, elementary particle, can actually impart momentum, even though photons are massless particles. How does that work? It's a massless particle, but somehow imparts momentum. I still think we just have really big misunderstandings in our physics. So by 2012, several papers by different groups, all reanalyzing the thermal radiation pressure forces inherent in the spacecraft showed that a careful accounting of this explains the entire anomaly. Thus, the case is mundane and does not point to any new phenomenon or need to update the laws of physics. Is that propellantless thrust? I mean, it's, it's heat. And they say that that is a propellant. But photons are massless. I don't know how this makes sense to them, but apparently it does. The most detailed analysis to date by some of the original investigators explicitly looks at two methods of estimating thermal forces, concluding that there is no statistically significant difference between the two estimates and that once the thermal recoil force is properly accounted for, no anomalous acceleration remains. So quite interesting. So where does this leave us? Pursuit of any gravity technology has been a long journey filled with both scientific breakthroughs and dead ends. It seems like there's kind of a duality existing here. You can't have propellantless thrust, according to the scientific community, and yet the pioneer anomaly emits heat. How are photons massless and yet can still push a sail? How do they actually impart momentum? Is shooting a laser one direction, is that actually emitting propellant? If it's just light, couldn't you just shoot a really strong laser one direction and and then actually without propellant, you're just shooting out light. Couldn't that push a spacecraft? So while we haven't yet seen revolutionary propulsion systems that science fiction often portrays, continuous research and development suggests that we may be on the brink of significant discoveries. I imagine AI and AGI will certainly help scientific community remains divided. Some view these efforts as futile, while others believe breakthroughs in understanding gravity and inertia could transform our capabilities in aerospace travel and beyond. I totally agree. That must be the case. The classified nature of much of this research adds another layer of mystery, leaving us to speculate how far we've come since this paper in 1970. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button. It really helps and it's free. Consider subscribing to get future notifications of when I release videos. And you might like this video recommended by YouTube just for you. If you want to support the channel, join these great people over here, get exclusive bonus content, then click this button here, patreon.com forward slash Chris Slato, or become a YouTube member. If you want to continue the discussion, go to UAP Society Discord. Links are all in the description. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.